Every autumn, my friends and I go on a weekend camping trip. We've been doing this since high school and now 10 years later, it's a tradition we all look forward to. This year, we decided to explore a new location, a dense forest known as Blackwood, about two hours from our hometown. We'd heard rumors about it, mostly old legends and ghost stories, but we shrugged them off. After all, we were just looking for a bit of adventure. On Friday afternoon, we loaded our gear into the car and set off. There were four of us, me, James, Sarah, and Mike. The drive was filled with our usual banter and laughter, but as we approached Blackwood, an uneasy silence fell over us. The trees here were tall and ancient, their twisted branches casting long shadows even in the afternoon light. We found a small clearing to set up camp and quickly pitched our tents. The atmosphere was eerie, but we ignored it, chalking it up to our overactive imaginations. As night fell, we gathered around the campfire, roasting marshmallows and sharing stories. The forest around us was unnaturally quiet, the usual sounds of wildlife conspicuously absent. As the night grew darker, Sarah suggested we tell ghost stories. Mike, ever the skeptic, scoffed but agreed. We went around the circle, each of us trying to outdo the others with the scariest tale. When it was James' turn, he leaned forward, his face illuminated by the flickering flames. Have you guys ever heard the legend of the Hollow Man? He asked, his voice low and serious. We shook our heads, intrigued. According to the legend, James continued, the Hollow Man was once a woodsman who lived in these forests centuries ago. He was known for his cruel and violent nature and the villagers feared him. One night, after a particularly brutal attack on a traveler, the villagers decided they'd had enough. They captured him, dragged him deep into the forest and hanged him from an old oak tree. But before he died, he cursed the forest, vowing that his spirit would never rest and that he would hunt down anyone who dared enter his domain. James paused, letting his words sink in. The fire crackled, casting strange shadows on our faces. They say the hollow man still roams these woods, James said softly. If you're quiet enough, you can hear his footsteps, the sound of rope creaking, and if you're really unlucky, you'll see him, eyes hollow, a noose around his neck searching for his next victim. A chill ran down my spine. I glanced around the dark forest, suddenly feeling like we were being watched. That's just a story, Mike said, trying to sound brave but failing to hide the tremor in his voice. There's no such thing as ghosts. We all laughed nervously, trying to shake off the fear. But the unease lingered. One by one, we retreated to our tents, the fire slowly dying down. I awoke in the middle of the night to a strange sound. At first, I thought it was just the wind. But then I heard it again. A faint rhythmic creaking like an old rope swinging back and forth. My heart pounded in my chest as I strained to listen. The sound grew louder, closer, and I realized it was coming from just outside our campsite. I quietly unzipped my tent and peeked out. The moonlight filtered through the trees, casting eerie shadows on the ground. I saw a dark figure standing at the edge of the clearing, swaying slightly. It was too dark to make out any details, but I could see the outline of what looked like a rope around its neck. Panic surged through me. I zipped my tent back up and lay there, trembling, trying to convince myself it was just a trick of the light. But the creaking continued, relentless and haunting. The next morning, I told the others what I'd seen. James looked uneasy, while Sarah and Mike tried to laugh it off. You were probably just dreaming, Mike said. Or maybe it was an animal. But I could tell they were all on edge. We decided to explore the forest that day, hoping the daylight would dispel our fears. We followed a narrow trail that wound through the trees, the silence oppressive. 
After an hour of walking, we came across an old gnarled oak tree. The bark was scarred and twisted, and an old frayed rope hung from one of the branches. This must be the tree from the legend, James said, his voice barely above a whisper. A sense of dread washed over us. We quickly moved on, trying to put as much distance between us and the tree as possible. But the forest seemed to close in around us, the shadows growing darker and the air colder. As night fell, we made our way back to camp. The sense of unease had only grown stronger, and we huddled around the campfire, our nerves frayed. The creaking sound returned, louder and more insistent. This time, we all heard it. We need to leave, Sarah said, her voice shaking. Now, we hurriedly packed our things, our movements frantic. As we made our way through the dark forest, the creaking followed us, growing louder and more frantic. I glanced back and saw the figure again, closer this time, its hollow eyes fixed on us. We broke into a run, the forest seeming to twist and turn, disorienting us. The creaking was deafening now, a constant reminder of the hollow man's presence. Finally, we burst out of the trees and into the clearing where our car was parked. We piled in and sped away, not looking back. Even now, months later, I can still hear that creaking sound in my nightmares. We haven't spoken about that night since, each of us trying to forget. But I know one thing for sure, I will never set foot in Blackwood again, in... I go camping with my dad every summer. He's been doing it his whole life, and recently I've started enjoying it too. I'm 16 now, and last year my dad and I went on our annual camping trip. We found a spot online together while searching for a new area to explore. There weren't any pictures of the place, but the map was straightforward, and the trail description said it was easy and uncrowded. We set out on a Friday morning, parking on the side of the road and beginning down the trail. After the first quarter mile, it was clear that the description wasn't very accurate. The trail was steep in some parts, and much of it was muddy or overgrown, making it quite challenging. But since we were already there, we pushed through and eventually reached the campsite. It didn't look much different from the woods we'd been walking through for the past two hours, trees everywhere and an overgrown patch of grass to set up our stuff. There were no cool views or anything. We pitched our tents and made lunch. My dad's a bit of a talker, so we spent the rest of the day chatting. As the sun started to set, we walked around the trees near the campsite, collecting dry sticks to make a fire. In the middle of our conversation, we were interrupted by a loud voice behind us. We both stopped talking and spun around, but the woods were suddenly quiet again, and we didn't see anyone. The voice had sounded not too far away, maybe a mile out. Neither of us said anything for about 30 seconds, just staring at the trees trying to spot any movement. Then it came again, a man's voice yelling. It sent chills through me. There was pain and harshness in the scream like he was in trouble. I looked at my dad who looked really conflicted and worried. He turned me around and led me back to the campsite, quickly starting the fire. The screams kept coming and eventually I asked my dad if we should help. I could tell my dad was thinking through every option. He faced me and told me to stay by the fire and wait. His face was serious, and he said he was going to run a little ways toward the voice to see what he could find, and that if I saw anyone I shouldn't let them near me. I agreed and watched him run toward the man's voice. After a minute, he was out of sight. Honestly, I wasn't sure what I would have done if I were in my dad's shoes. Leaving someone in need of serious help would make me feel horrible. But we were also in the middle of the woods. And if something happened, well, I don't know. After 10 minutes, I started to get a little worried. The sun was dropping fast and there was still no sign of my dad. But then suddenly the screaming stopped. The whole forest was quiet again. 
I wondered if my dad had found him and was helping him, or if something else had happened. Still, after another ten minutes my dad was nowhere in sight. As darkness started to cover the forest, I grew more and more nervous. I stood up and walked a little bit away from the campsite toward where my dad had gone. There were still no signs of him, so I walked a little more. Then finally I heard footsteps from up ahead. I still couldn't see anything, but as the sound of the steps got closer and closer, an eerie, almost disturbing feeling came over me. Then just before I thought they would come into my sight, a voice to my left called my name. It was my dad, running toward me and yelling at me to go back. There was urgency and worry in his voice, so I hurried back to the campsite, and my dad followed behind me. He quickly packed the essentials into his backpack. The look on my dad's face is something I still remember vividly. It was complete fear and distress. We left the tents and ran for the first mile, then fast walked back to our car. On the drive home, I asked him what he saw out there, who the man was, and why he was screaming. My dad said nothing. Even to this day, he never brings it up or says anything about what he saw. Every time I mention that day, his entire demeanor changes and his face falls flat. So, I just stopped asking. All I can think about now are those footsteps I heard walking toward me and what would have happened if my dad hadn't shown up in time.